Okay, so one of the books that I want to show you is I've had this book for a really long time and I've gotten so much information from this book. Um, if you follow my channel, then you know how many videos related to Titanic that I have made um, and uploaded. And I actually got a lot of information from this book. Um, most recently, the most recent Titanic book I've shown you, or the collection of books, is the Titanic Ship Magnificent, and that is an incredible wealth of information on Titanic. But before there was that, there was this. And this is by Dr. Robert Ballard, a personal hero of mine, him and Jacques Cousteau. And I've used this book so many times, but I've never actually shown it to you guys. And I, I want to show you guys this book. Now, I remember getting... This originally came out in 1992. I remember going to, I believe it was Walden Books, and it was $75. And I saved up a couple of weeks for my pay, and <laughs> I had to get it, so I got it. Sadly, I had given it to my son, and over the years, he's lost it. So I replaced it with this copy. This is not the original copy. I think this is the third printing. But sadly, I had the first printing of this that I had given to my son, and it's, it's lost. So, but the point that I want to make about this wonderful book is that this is the, this is the history, Titanic history Bible before I had gotten the ship Magnificent. I've gotten so much information from this. Um, and I've got other Titanic books that I want to show you guys that I've used as a reference, but none as much as this wonderful book. So this is the Titanic, an illustrated history, text by Don Lynch, paintings by Ken Marshall, the wonderful Ken Marshall, the very talented Ken Marshall, and an introduction by Robert D. Ballard. So I'm not going to read it to you word for word, but let me show you guys what it looks like without the, the, uh, the dust jacket. Because this is a, one of the larger books. You've got the inner part, the Titanic and illustrated history. Huge ocean liner and its lights ablaze. Band playing, slowly sinking in the calm sea. To most people, this image evokes a name alone, the Titanic. Eighty years after this great maritime disaster, the haunting saga of Titanic continues to fascinate the world. Now in one splendidly illustrated volume, a complete story of the giant luxury liner that sank on its maiden voyage in April of 1912 is recreated as never before. Through dozens of full-color, stunningly accurate paintings and illustrations by Titanic artist Ken Marshall, readers can actually experience what it's like to sail on history's most famous ship. From the sight of water crashing through the glass dome roof, to the first class staircase, to a view of the underwater robot exploring the remains of the staircase seven decades later. Each of the original Marshall paintings displayed here is breathtakingly impactful. Historian Don Lynch and foremost expert on people aboard the Titanic has compiled a text filled with enthralling new information about the crew, the passengers, and the ship herself. Encyclopedic in scope, this volume is an invaluable source of Titanic lore. Fascinating special features discuss issues ranging from the fate of the dogs on Titanic to the controversy surrounding whether Captain Lord of the Californian, whose ship was in the area the night of the disaster, has been justly vilified for not coming to the rescue. Pages of Titanic and illustrated history also display hundreds of archival photographs, paintings, and illustrations many of them published here for the first time. John Lynch and Marshall have located photographs, fittings, and fixtures of Titanic nearly identical sister ship, the Olympic, and thus can reveal the Edwardian splendor of the ship's interior in colorful visual spreads. This book showpiece is without doubt its three-page fold-out, which reveals the original cutaway design of Titanic. It's a remarkable full-color illustration history created by Ken Marshall expressively for this book. 
Titanic's hull is open up to reveal the layout of her public rooms, staterooms, and accuracy in every detail. With the splendor of the past of the night that will never be forgotten, here is the complete Titanic from first conception to final repose on the ocean floor. So, this book, like I said, it is a wealth of information. I'm not going to go through it um, page by page. There are some areas that I made notes, mental notes, that I'll show you guys. I will put this up in high definition. I don't know if you'll be able to actually pause and read. You might be able to. You know what? I'm going to put the light off because it's just putting a glare. You might be able to see it better without the light. So, you got a beautiful, beautiful picture. I love this, this picture. A Titanic cradled in the berth as she was being built. Harlan and Wolf shipyards. And another beautiful Ken Marshall illustration. I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. So the contents, the introduction, building the legend, the voyage begins, a ship of dreams, that fateful Sunday, a deadly encounter to the lifeboats, death of Titanic, rescue, aftermath, questions, discovery, the Titanic legacy, legacy postscript, acknowledgments, and the index. And a lot of it, a lot of the information I had gotten, and again, I, I just have to show you as many of these absolutely gorgeous illustrations as possible. I've tried to paint a <laughs> freehand of Titanic, and I just did a horrible job, and Ken Marshall makes it look so easy. Look at these beautiful pictures. We'll start with the introduction, um, and this is by Robert Ballard, so I think I want to I want to include this in this video. When I first thought about looking for the Titanic, the ship represented little more than a technological challenge. Famous wreck lost in deep water that would test the limits of underwater robots. I was developing these for deep sea research and exploration. However, the more familiar I became with the story, the more my fascination grew. Soon this grand old lady of the deep had me completely under her spell. But, I have to admit, even I was surprised at the overwhelming public response as we found the ship in 1985. After all, Titanic went down in 1912, 80 years ago. She would have been dead and buried in 1912. But her allure seems greater today than ever. I've described the wreck of Titanic as an entrance deep sea museum and argued strongly that it be left unmolested by treasure seekers. Unfortunately, it's a museum few people will ever have the chance to visit. All the more reason then to welcome this extraordinary book, which combines what our subsequent exhibitions have learned about the wreck, with most complete compendium of Titanic ever gathered between hard covers. This book is a living museum you want to visit time and time again. In it, you will meet not only the rich and famous, the Astors, Wedners, and the Strausses, but many of the ordinary passengers whose lives were changed or ended by Titanic's maiden voyage. Don Lynch, the historian of Titanic, the historical society, has spent many years researching every aspect of the story. His fascinating text now provides new insights into the voyage, the passengers, and crew. And Lynch writes, part of the lore and mystery of Titanic will always be its unanswered questions. Would a different captain have avoided the iceberg? Could the ship have been prevented from sinking? What kind of hole did the iceberg cause in the hull? Ironically, the finding of the wreck in 85 solved some of the mysteries, but it created others. More than anything, discovery proved that Titanic has become a permanent object of fascination for millions. I couldn't agree more. It gives me particular pleasure to salute the amazing artistic skills of Ken Marshall, whose contributions alone make this book a collector's item. One day in July of 86, after an exhaustive dive to Titanic with our submersible Alvin, I was called to the bridge to take over a satellite call from Time magazine. The editors of Time wanted to feature our expedition on their cover, but in order to make their publishing deadline 
They wanted me to cut short my exploration of the ship to bring the images collected so far to their artist. I politely told them that this was out of the question and returned to our photographic work. The next day I received a second call from Time. They had changed their minds. If I would describe what I'd been and seen so far, the artist over the radio would go ahead with the cover story. To this I agreed, but inwardly I wondered how even the best artist in the world could come close to capturing the wreck I'd seen only in fragments. Like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Several days later, I was back in Woods Hole in Massachusetts on my way to the lecture hall for a quick press conference when someone handed me a copy of Time. It stopped me in my tracks, for there on the cover was Titanic. Not someone's idea of what it might lo have looked like by a dead ringer of the ship that I had crawled over for two weeks, crumpled little sub with a flashlight. It was an image I'd carried around in my head and found impossible to describe to others. Yet Ken Marshall had captured that image with the rest of the world to see. He could paint such an amazing portrait based on a quick description over the ship's radio. You can imagine what he's done after studying the thousands of images we collected. I'll never forget my first look at the Titanic. This was on our second dive in the Alvin in 1986. Our headlights cut a narrow swath through the submarine darkness, illuminating nothing but gray mud. Suddenly, a huge black shape loomed out of the gloom, the knife edge of the bow plowing into the bottom of the gigantic wave as it came straight for us. Later, we would land on the boat deck where Jason Jr. went to the grand staircase and explore the vast debris field. But that moment will always stay with me, the image of Titanic alive again. In Titanic and Illustrated History, the great lost liner brought magnificently back to life for those of you who can visit Titanic in person. This beautiful book is the next best thing. Robert D. Ballard, Woods Hole Institute, Massachusetts, 1992, January. I'm sorry, I didn't want to ramble on, but I wanted to read you the introduction by Dr. Ballard because there is there's iron in his words because I mean I'm from New England and I've always been fascinated with Titanic but I've got friends that are in the middle of the country the Midwest and as far away as the UK that are also obsessed with this magnificent ship and it's an honor to show you guys this book it's got magnificent photographs and pictures. Again, I'm not going to go through page for page and read it to you, but I have mental notes of the areas that I, I want to show you that I've used, like in the history video that I made. I used a lot of these photographs as long, uh, excuse me, as well as the information. I love that photograph of her. This is a nice photograph of her launch just before she was fitted out. Again, you can see her launch. The, the ticket launch of the White Star Mail Triple Screw Steamer Titanic at Belfast, Wednesday, 31st, 31st of May, 1911 at 12.45 p.m. And some of the fitting out photos. You can see her alongside Olympic. I love that picture. The two glorious sisters. You can see the smokestacks that were on and more of her fitting out. The voyage begins. Now, this is after she's built. Hopefully, you can see that beautiful picture. Uh, let's see, Southampton. This is a nice picture. Let me get rid of that glare. I love this photograph. Titanic side over towers over Southampton's ocean dock. You see that beautiful. You see the, the way the promenade deck overhangs slightly over the, over the side of the ship. And this brings us to one of my 
just about my favorite photograph of Titanic ever taken. And this is actually my screensaver on my computer. The tug Vulcan pulls the Titanic away from White Star's birth 44. I just absolutely love that picture. And that's also an amazing photograph. Or, I'm sorry, that's an illustration, not a photograph. Another photograph. Titanic's close encounter with New York is depicted on the left. Turning into the river, she approached the Oceanic in a New York moored in Berth 38. The Titanic's passing caused the New York 2 to swing towards her. Tug Vulcan attached lines to the New York above, and Titanic reverses her engines and averted a near collision. Captain Smith top right in the main bridge, but the ship is under command of the harbor pilot. The Titanic moves backwards, and the New York's bow swings out in front of her. 3. New York is moved by tugs. 4. And after more than an hour's delay, Titanic finally departs. You can see that illustration right there. And I'll put it up in a photo so you can follow along. Because Titanic was so big, her, her wake just acted like, acted like a, um, a vacuum. See another beautiful illustration. The Ship of Dreams. I want to show you some pictures from the Ship of Dreams chapter. And I want to show you how truly mind-blowingly beautiful she is. Look at this. This is the first class lounge where passengers meant for cards and conversation. Look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Another photograph of it. And that brings us to the first, the, the fold out. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to show you guys to see if I put the light on, if it makes it better. All right, so let's start with the bow. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'll show you the picture of the of the fold out but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you each section of the ship so I'm going to read off the key one is the anchor crane two is the forecastle deck three is the crow's nest four is the third class cabins five is the forward deck well six the morse lamp on bridge wing cab 7 is the bridge, 8 is a wheelhouse, 9 is the containing cargo um, and Renault automobile, 10 the first class baggage, 11 is the post office, 12 is the mail room, 13 is the first class staterooms, 14 the officers quarters, 15 is the swimming pool, 16 is the Turkish baths, 17 a deck enclosed promenade, first class. 18, forward first class stair, uh, staircase. 19 is the gymnasium. 20 is the private promenade from the parlor suite. 21 is the reception room. 22, the first class dining saloon. 23 is the third class dining saloon. 24 is the third class galley. Number 25 is the first class lounge. 26, a compass platform, a midship. 27, the boiler rooms. 28, the bilge keel. 29, a deck open promenade, the first class. 30, the first and second class galley. Reciprocating engine room is number 31. Number 32, the turbine engine room. 33 is the aft first class staircase. 34, the Parisian buffet. Cafe Parisian, excuse me. 35, first class smoking room. 36, the veranda, palm court. And 37 is a la carte restaurant. The hospital is 38, 39 is the second class dining saloon, 40 is the second class enclosed promenade, 41 second class entrance and boat deck, 
42 is the second class cabins, 43 is the aft well deck, 44, third class general room, 45 is the poop deck, and number 46 is the docking bridge. You can see an illustration of the grand staircase. Beautiful. Um, first class staircase. I think this is one of the most beautiful, and again, I'm going to shut the light because of the glare. All right, look at that. And forgive me, this book is rather large. And let's see, this is the uh, the entrance hall absolutely gorgeous so we got some illustrations of the dining saloon some of the china before dinner passengers gathered in a reception room and then entered the dining saloon through the double doors shown on the left So, the first class staterooms, I want to show you these because you can see that illustration and hopefully you can see the, the deck plans, some of the, illust uh, the photographs, excuse me. The veranda. Absolutely gorgeous. Veranda Cafe, where you see along the promenade deck. The Cafe Parisian. The reading and writing room. The Turkish bath. They've actually have video now as they've gone through with video of recently as I think it was 2020 or 2022 I'm not quite sure but they show the inside and because this is all peak uh, the wood is still preserved and the tiles the ceramic tiles don't corrode and it still looks beautiful so let's take a look at the barber shop beautiful you got the gymnasium. You can see on the boat deck. And again, there's so much in this book. I made little mental notes of what to show you guys or specific, what I've used specifically for my videos. There's the second class public room. Um, we've got the third class. You've got the third class dining room. And incidentally, a lot of the third class areas on Titanic would be comparable to first class on other ships of the time period. So we go into the fateful Sunday, um, the sinking of the ship. Uh, let's see, again, they have I want some information after Dr. Ballard had found the ship, because there's more illustrations by Ken Marshall. Um, there's a couple of things here that I want to show you guys, the rescuing of the ship. So we have an illustration. You got the Carpathia, as the lifeboats are going to it. And that's by Colin Campbell Cooper, that's not by Ken Marshall. 
and you can see this photograph that's almost big become iconic and these photos the lifeboat number 14 under the command of officer low you've got the collapsible beneath that and this one was taken by a passenger aboard Carpathia and that one has become kind of infamous like I said there's so much information that's in this book to go through it everything with you guys would be this will be a 12-hour video and even that we just scratched the surface you can see the lifeboats collected after the disaster let's fast forward now to the discovery of Titanic by Dr. Ballard so this is July 14th of 1986 where they've gone back you can see the icicles coming down um, the rusticles coming down the side of the ship when Robert Ballard first glimpsed Titanic above it looked like a wall of steel rising from the ocean floor left during a descent to the wreck site he communicates the research ship Atlantis 2 while pilot Dudley Foster checks the submarine's depth top right Let's see that will be that one I believe formations ballad dubbed rusticles hung from over the portholes of the first class stateroom bottom right look at that photo I, I can't even imagine the chills of I've been to Gettysburg Pennsylvania and I've gotten the chills can you imagine going to the wreck site of Titanic and actually seeing Titanic in front of you? Look at that. Of course, he did not file for ownership. RMS Titanic now holds the, the rights to the ship. You can see the boiler, just like it appeared when Robert Ballard first found Titanic in 1985. Six weeks of sonar tracking on the French ship La Sorite top. I've actually got a model of that kit that I've shown you guys. With no signs of the lost liner and the faces of Ballard and French team leader Jean Louis Mitchell. Discovery of the Titanic's giant boilers above. Once they had seen that, they knew they had found Titanic. And we have some more photos and brilliant illustrations by Ken Marshall. You see the, the immense damage to the stern section as it was just the, the pressure and the landing force, the impact just kind of blew out the sides and just made a total mess of the section. You can see the captain's bathtub and the bench railings you can see some more photographs of personal artifacts and an illustration of how big the debris field would be between the halves of the ship looking at more brilliant illustrations And this one gets me when I first saw that photograph it just it gave me the chills the actual the wire is still hanging and the light is still hanging a photograph of a light fixture shows that the partially sprouted feather C pen sticking out and the remains of the grand staircase that's actually an illustration by Ken Marshall So that basically goes in um, the discovery by Robert Ballard. Of course, they've done a lot more now on the um, photography. There's a lot more technologically advanced camera equipment than there was back then. And you can see the old, the reliable tit uh, Titanic's sister, Olympic. 
and Titanic's other sister, Britannic. I actually learned about her first from one of my heroes, Jacques Cousteau. Um, I had seen he, because he actually discovered Britannic first. And basically we have the, uh, the index at the end. And again, this book is just, I don't want to seem to blow through this, but this book really could go page for page and read you the whole thing, but there's so much information I have gotten from this book. And on the back, we have a little bit of information. We got Don Lynch, um, devoted to 20 years of research of the Titanic and people who sailed on her. And we, um, below him, we have Ken Marshall, undoubtedly the leader painter of the Titanic artwork today. And then we have Dr. Ballard. The author of, this, of the introduction led the team that discovered the Titanic in 1985. Years later, descended to, uh, excuse me, a year later, he descended two and a half miles back below the surface of the Atlantic to explore the remains of the shattered liner. In 1989, he also located and photographed the wreck of the German battleship Bismarck off the coast of France. And I've actually shown you guys that book. I've gotten a lot of information from that because I've done the history of the Bismarck as well and I've gotten a lot of information from Dr. Ballard's book. And finally, we have the back cover of a dust jacket. The great liner revealed in words and pictures as never before and this book is amazing. Titanic, well if you're a Titanic lover, chances are you've already got this book. But if you like Titanic and you want to learn more and you can't necessarily afford the ship Magnificent. Um, pick this up. You will not be disappointed. This is an amazing, amazing book. No one ever dreamed that her first voyage would also be her last. The elegantly dressed first class passengers who swept down the grand staircase on the way to dinner. Titanic seemed to be the ultimate in comfort and serenity. But only after, hours later, after the ship, greatest ship ever built, would end up lying on the bottom of the Atlantic. A few surviving passengers would be left shivering in lifeboats. Now the complete story of the unsinkable Titanic, from her first collision to the launch of her sinking and rediscovery, is told in words and hundreds of pictures in our magnificent, lavishly illustrated volume. And again, this is an amazing book. And I know I, I seems like I just rushed through the whole thing. This thing is just so amazing. It's so packed, so full with information that it didn't do it justice. So that's why I, I suggest you get one. Um, you can get you can get this book right now. You can get it a lot cheaper than I did because, <laughs> like I said, I paid seventy-five dollars for my version of this book in 1992 when it first came out. Um, you can get them on eBay, you can get them on Amazon, and you can get them a lot cheaper than that now. But if you're a fan of RMS Titanic, you won't be disappointed if you pick up this book. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. And this is kicking off April, Titanic month. And I'm going to have a lot more videos of Titanic to come. So my friends, thank you so much for watching. And until my next Titanic video, I'll talk to you soon.